Today we're going to be doing some Am I the Asshole or AITA. If you don't know what AITA is, it's a subreddit uh, where people submit stories, mostly personal stories that happen to them, but sometimes stories that happen to a friend and they ask, uh, am I the asshole in this situation? Answers can range from YTA, you're the asshole, NTA, you're not the asshole, uh, or ESH, everybody sucks here. So if you see, if you see any of those, uh, then that's what they mean. It's a fun little game where we get to play judge, jury, and executioner. Uh, we are the final verdict, and we decide who is guilty. Guilty! And I'm excited to judge people. It's my favorite part of all this. AITA for telling my in-laws, I will not be changing the name of my bakery just because they work there. Oh, it's an in-law one. The in-laws are always the asshole. Anytime there's an in-law story, the in-laws are the asshole. It's like it's like the, the pregnant woman rule with these threads. Anytime there's a pregnant woman in the, involved, she's not the asshole. The bakery was originally my parents' bakery, my mom's more specifically. Dad worked there, but mom ran the whole thing. She was the driving force behind it. The bakery was named something with son in it. Okay, you don't want to share it, that's fine. When my parents had me four years later, they named me Sonny. My mom had a very complicated pregnancy and delivery and I was going to be their only child. So they named me after the bakery. I always loved the connection. It was especially meaningful because my mom died when I was seven. Okay, yeah, you're not the asshole. I've already concluded. Dad kept it running with help so I could take it over one day if I wanted to. So mom's no legacy never died. Oh, come on. Whatever happened, it's not your fault. Do we have to read the rest of this? He got sick when I was 16. It was tough. He fought as long as he could, but he died when I was 18. I took over the bakery. For crying out loud. Your in-laws dare to come in and tell you you need to change the name of your bakery of your dead parents. You're basically like the bakery equivalent of Batman in this story. They can't fuck with you. I baked from a really young age and dreamed of running it one day. So I took over as the head baker and I kept it open for a decade. A decade? In that time I met and married my wife, Lila. She started working there and her mom and sister also joined the small team we have. Oh no, the in-laws work there. But they work for you though, because you own the bakery. Do you think a Walmart cashier would have the right to be like, we should really consider renaming Walmart after me? They'd be like, no, <laughs> you're the cashier. <laughs> we are the owners. It was going well until a few months ago. We were at Lila's parents' house. Her whole family was there and they brought up how the name for the bakery feels wrong when the family has changed so much. Oh. The family. Lila told them the bakery is still mine and given the history and who named it, they shouldn't think they would get a say in any of it. Okay. Golf clap for Lila. Golf clap for Lila. Good job. Good job. We're with you so far. Okay. Uh, it was dropped for a while. Then they brought it up again. Lila again reminded them it was none of their business. Okay, so far Lila's fighting the good fight. Lila is expecting our first child now. Okay, so Lila has... AITA immunity. She can't be the asshole now under any circumstances. And she hasn't been working as much or at all these last couple of months. And I've noticed some comments here and there from mother-in-law, especially about darling bakery names or how nice business names are when they tell you it's a family run thing. Oh, they are, they are towing that line super hard right now. They think, they think that this bakery is their family business. That's what they think. I would internally roll my eyes, but smile and say those were great names for those people's businesses. Clearly she got annoyed because then her and my sister-in-law cornered me recently and told me that they felt like they had such a big part in it, which they don't, that the name should reflect the family and not just me or what my mom had wanted to call it. I told them I will not be changing the name just because they work there. And if that is a problem, there is no reason for them to force themselves to say if they don't want to. Amen. Both told me they do not want to work there and told me I was twisting what they said. That they just want to feel more included and like this is their family business too. Well, too fucking bad, cause it's not, you little shits. They want to take over is what they want to do. It starts with the name, that's step one. That's step one, is it starts with the name. 
And then step two is like, hey, how about I get promoted to management position? Step three is like, hey, you're really busy right now. We can take, we can take over the bakery for a little while. And then before you know it, it's there. It really is their family business. Mother-in-law told me that unless we plan on naming our child some son-related name, it's just going to be a random name in the future. Well, then you can use that argument for you too. You're like, I want to name it Mother-in-Law Bakery. Oh, well, unless we name our child Mother-in-Law, then it's just going to be a random name in the future. I pointed out many businesses are that, but they told me I was being deliberately obtuse. A-I-T-A. No, N-T-A. Shout out from the rooftops. I wish I had, I wish I had a megaphone right now to say N-T-A. How could you possibly think? that the bakery owner is the asshole in this situation and not and not the the mother-in-law cashier who's like I think it should be named mother-in-law bakery. I'm the most uh important part of this operation. NTA and you have much bigger problems than the name of your bakery. They think they own it now. Exactly what I was saying. I was saying that. You need to be very clear that it is yours and only yours. They work there only. They do not have a say in how it is ran. They have gotten way too comfortable. So this is the thing. We had we had we had one like this recently. We had a, we had an AITA thread like this recently. It was um it was the wedding one uh where where um the in laws were trying to run the thing and the the bride like both of her parents were gone. She wanted her sister to walk her down the aisle. Y'all remember that? And then the father in law was like, I think I should, and that's inappropriate and all this stuff. Sadly, this is the same. It's the same pattern of like the bigger family like bullies the smaller one. Yeah, the thing is, is like, <sighs> in a lot of dynamics. What, what, your, your in-law, the best defense against your in-laws is your folks. Because a lot, a lot of times that'll get them to back down. It's like, I'm going to tell my mom about this. And then mother-in-law is going to have to go up against mother-in-law. But when there's no mother-in-law to go up against, then it's, uh the wild west all of a sudden. So yeah, that's obviously an NTA situation. It's not even, not even really, not even really anything else to analyze. It's just so clearly not their fault. <laughs> AITA for leaving my sister's wedding. Okay, well, it depends on the reason. Ugh. For a little backstory, I, 24F, and my sister, 26F, have never been crazy close, but we get on well. I found out I was pregnant with my daughter, unplanned, about a year after she announced she was engaged. At the time the invited were sent out, the invites were sent out, my daughter wasn't born, but she would have been at the time of the wedding. Oh God, is this timeline necessary? So I called my sister and asked what the rules were in regard to children. She said it was child free. Okay. So you got the invite for your older sister's wedding and you're pregnant with your daughter. Do you like, do you guys like my, do you guys like my, you're pregnant with your daughter. Okay. And then at a time that your daughter would be born, um, is the time of the wedding. Uh, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to interpret. I'm not only here to judge and uh, tell you tell you the the conclusion, my 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 final judgment on the on the thread, but I'm also here to interpret. So well, it's child free, child free for your niece slash nephew? No, 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 no. M Rando child, yeah. Like you don't want the neighborhood kid to be at the wedding. Is, who is that? Your niece? You don't want your niece there? That's a red flag for me. I made arrangements for someone to have the baby on the day of the wedding and thought no more of it. Okay, but you hadn't had the baby yet, did you? Okay, I see. For some additional context, I was extremely unwell my entire pregnancy and almost died giving birth. Okay, we're getting... <laughs> okay. As if we need to pile on on the sister anymore. She's already the asshole. Leave her alone, she's already dead. Not once did my sister ask how we were, not even when the baby was born, not even a text to say congratulations. I feel, I feel like, uh, okay, the sister's the asshole. Okay, this, this child-free sister's the asshole. But I feel like based on these sentences that there's a little bit of vindictiveness happening here. Like, I feel like they, they, they really like crammed out, like type in these sentences just like for some additional context she didn't ask even once how i was she was four months old by the time of the wedding and my sister had met her once and that was only because i went down to see her i live a hundred miles away we get it she sucks she's the asshole you're a saint okay 
You drive a hundred miles to introduce your daughter to your sister. She's making no effort. She didn't ask how you were. You almost died. Give me she didn't say a text. We get it. There's there's no chance that you'll be the asshole in this situation, okay? You're just you're laying it on a little thick here. We get to the wedding and turns out it's not child free. <gasps> it's not even baby free. This broke my heart and I was so angry. So I just left the wedding and went and picked up my child and drove back home. What? Oh my gosh. Her sister is like, isn't just an asshole. She's a Disney villain, you know? Like she's legitimately an evil person. <laughs> she's like, she's up there. She's up there in like the top 10 most evil human beings of all time. <laughs> she's just like, imagine being this person. Like your sister calls you, your pregnant sister calls you and is like, so can I have my daughter at the wedding? And you're just like, it's child free, click. And then, like, and then, and then, and then you're like, my sister almost died and was extremely unwell during her pregnancy, but I'm not going to ask how she is. Ugh. Oh, my niece was born. I won't send a text to say congratulations. Oh, you want to introduce me to to your niece? Well, you will have to drive a hundred miles to come see me, and then I will secretly plan for my wedding to not be child free. Haha! <laughs> Everyone can bring their child except my sister. <laughs> Two weeks later, my sister calls me and asks why my husband and I left. And when I told her, she kicked off saying it wasn't personal. My daughter wasn't invited. The other babies were invited as they were her family. Um, okay. This is like, like if this, okay. I feel like I'm going to have to say the unsaid here. The unsaid part of every thread I read is like, if we can believe this to be true, right? I don't want to go into every thread being like, no, did they make this up? We're just going to take it on face value that it's true. If this is true, this is like the worst person I've ever heard of. <laughs> Two weeks later, I get that you have the honeymoon right after the wedding. But if I see, if I'm up there as the bride and I see through my binoculars that my sister and her husband are leaving and I don't chase after her or call her right then, like, I wait two weeks? What kind of a person would, would would you have to be for that? And then they say it wasn't personal. The other babies were invited since they're my family. That is personal though. Your niece is your family. I just told her that her niece is also her family and hung up. Some of my family thinks I'm the asshole and should have just sucked up for my sister's wedding, but my friends are on my side. This is one of those situations where I'm like, tell me. What did you do to this person? <laughs> because this whole thread is just, I mean, you can hear the chorus of angels in the background anytime they're talking about themselves. Oh, like you're the total angel saint. And then every time they talk about the sister, she's this mustache twirling villain. Like, yes, yes. You have to drive a hundred miles to come see me. And and I will, I will, I will refuse to text you congratulations. Yes. And then I will invite other babies, random babies to my wedding and I'll call them my family. <laughs> like, what did you do? What did you do to make them act like that towards you? Are they just, are they just evil? NTA, the fact that she does not consider your daughter, her family is very troubling. And honestly, I'd stop making an effort at all to see her. Yeah, that's my thing too, is like, if y'all clearly don't have a close relationship, right? So like, why, why are you, why are you even putting any effort in? Maybe she won't after this, you know? Probably the babies of her chosen family, like, like friends babies? Like, what does she mean they're her family? I want to know who these other babies are now. Okay, um, so I think we've concluded definitively not the asshole, however, um, very suspicious framing here for the situation. Uh, they're just so bad, the other person. It leaves me wondering, like, is there more information? Can we get the sister to comment on this? I'd love that. AITA for not reminding my girlfriend to come get me after she forgot me in a car for an hour. Uh, huh? This past weekend, my 21F girlfriend, 22, oh wait, my, 21F, girlfriend, 22F, decided to make the two hour drive to her university for her graduation ceremony. Huh? Oh, she had just moved to my town this month. Oh, okay. And did not want to go through the whole four hour long graduation ceremony. But she did want to go up and take pictures and say goodbye to her friends before they all dispersed over the country. That's not how you spell dispersed, but I'm gonna let it go. My girlfriend asked me to make the drive with her four hours in total. 
I did not really want to go, but we have been going through a rough patch, and I thought this would be a good way to spend some much needed time together. Plus, we have been together two years, so it was all of our mutual friends graduating, and I wanted to say goodbye to everyone and see them all one last time. Okay. So how do we get to the part where you're stuck in the car like a like a hot dog? So we left at 8 a.m. on a Sunday and made the drive. When we got there, it was chaos. Everyone was leaving the auditorium and there was a massive crowd. I told her that I would go and find a place to park the car and she could go find our friends and figure out what the plan was. So y'all got there after the ceremony was over? I understand not wanting to go through like the four hour ceremony, but why did you literally come right as it was ending? Why wouldn't you come like, I don't know, half an hour before it ends, an hour before it ends? I told her that I would text her where I parked and I would stay in the car until she called or texted me to tell me where we were meeting. And if she didn't call me, then I would assume we were meeting at the car, which she agreed to. Huh? This is a terrible plan for so many reasons. First of all, you say here, I wanted to say goodbye to everyone and see them all one last time. So, but then you're like, I'm gonna stay in the car and not see everyone and just hope that everyone's gonna drop everything and come see me. Cause they're just assuming that they're all gonna meet somewhere, which apparently they didn't plan beforehand. If the plan was to miss the graduation ceremony, but say goodbye to everyone, why didn't you plan to go to, why didn't you plan to just meet at a lunch? Why wasn't that the plan? Why is it just like, we decided to show up after the ceremony and not say anything apparently. So everyone just assumes that we did like no showed, right? And then I'm just gonna awkwardly wait in the car in the parking lot. And I guess I won't text any of our friends. Why aren't you gonna text their friends? Who, what, is this before cell phones? So I parked the car only about a five to 10 minute walk from where I dropped her off and texted her where I was. She responded saying, okay. And then I sat in the car and proceeded to wait over an hour. Why did you do that though? I thought it was weird, but I figured she was just having a hard time finding everyone in the crowd. Plus, I trusted her to contact me when she found everyone. When she finally gets back, I told she told me that she found everyone and been taking pictures and saying goodbye to everyone. She said it was an accident and just got caught up in the confusion of the crowd. I was hurt, but asked where they were and if we were meeting up somewhere. She reluctantly told me that all of her friends had left with their families right after the ceremony and that they were gone. This is why you plan this shit. You can't just like... Uh, okay, we'll get to the girlfriend in a second. We'll get to the girlfriend in a second, okay? Because she's not in the clear either. But the car girlfriend just being like, I guess I'll just wait for an hour. These are your friends, right? You don't have any of their phone numbers? You're not texting them? You're not calling them? You don't have a backup plan? You just sit in the car for an hour? You just sit there? I guess nobody's talking to me. Like Eeyore and his little stick house? That's you? You didn't do anything malicious, but you didn't do anything proactive either. You just kind of like let life happen to you. Life was like punching you in the shoulder repeatedly and you were like, oh, 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 that hurts. But you didn't tell it to stop. Now, with that said, the girlfriend that went in and was caught up in the confusion of the crowd. Yeah, that was, uh... That's not a good thing either. Kind of an asshole thing to do. So I'd say you're both assholes. <laughs> Some of them out of the country, I might add. So I totally missed my chance to think about them. Also, like, how would you, this, this whole thing about like all of our friends left with their families. It's like, yeah, that's what you do after a graduation. You go hang out with your family because your family's there. You're not gonna just like, your family's not gonna show up and you're gonna be like, right, I'm gonna go hang out with my friends. <laughs> don't wait up. I mean, some people do that, but um, most people don't. I was heartbroken that she left me out of the plans she had begged me to come to. She knew where I was parked and she could have easily asked me to meet them. And you could have easily done something too. I was heartbroken that she left me out of plans she had begged me to come to. She knew, beg, wait. You didn't say this earlier. She begged you to come. She had begged me to come. But you wanted to come, but you wanted to come here too. You said, you said earlier, I wanted to say goodbye to everyone, see them all one last time. Sounds like you're kind of shifting the, the narrative here a little bit. I think part of the problem here, not to defend the older girlfriend, the graduating one, not to defend them, but maybe, maybe it was a case where as soon as she got dropped off because they, 
stupidly decided to get there as soon as the ceremony was ending and everybody was leaving to go spend time with their families. Maybe she had like, she had like just a small window to catch everybody and say goodbye to them. Uh, and so she didn't really have a chance to, to rope in her, her, her girlfriend to come meet with them. Seeing as we still have a two hour drive home and it was technically her graduation day, I told her that we can talk about this later because I don't want to ruin your graduation day. Can I just say that this sentence that they slipped in here, this is all slipped in here to make us take her side and things and be like, how could you be the asshole? You were being so considerate. So I, 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 I my, my little, rear, rear, my little asshole siren is going off on that one. So today I was obviously in a mood and she asked me if I was mad at her. I was like, of course I'm mad at you. You left me in the car like a dog. No, 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 no. You left yourself in the car like a dog. You could have gotten out of the car. You parked in the car and then you didn't leave it. You sat there for an hour. The thing is, is that when a dog is left in the car, they can't get out of it because they don't have keys. They don't have thumbs. You have thumbs and keys. You can leave the car anytime you want. I guess she took me saying, it's fine, we can talk about it later as don't worry about it, we're fine. What happened to not wanting to ruin the graduation day? She then told me, even though I forgot you, if you thought that, then why didn't you call or text me? Okay, she's not quite taking accountability here. Although, you know, we're getting, we're getting one side of the story. So maybe, I don't want to conjecture too much, but maybe the older girlfriend said like, I'm really sorry I did that. It's totally my fault. But why didn't you call or text me? We don't know how they phrased it. But even though I forgot you sounds, if that is what she says, then that's kind of like, that's not cool. That's like, it's like, hey, you did, you did a little more than that. AITA for not just letting it go. Should I have called or texted her after I've been a long time? Not after a long time, after like 10 minutes. Look at all these edits. <sighs> Edit one, I should clarify that she drove up. I was car company. I wasn't sitting in the car to have a reason to be angry with her. I just genuinely trusted the plan. See, this is the, the what, what plan? Sounds like you guys didn't have a plan. I wasn't angry until she came back and told me what had happened. I was happily sitting in the car, reading my book and watching TikToks. Also, I did not want to ruin her grad, which is why I told her we could talk about later. Afterwards, we got lunch and I have her graduation present. I just thought we'd talk about it the next day, but she seemed to think it was fine now. You, you're both horrible at communicating. Particularly you, but this is like, this is awful communication. No wonder you're you're going through a rough patch. You guys don't communicate about anything. I should probably also add that when I said wait for the plan is because I had no idea if we were all going somewhere after the ceremony, like to get lunch or go to the park or take pics, or if we we're all gonna meet them there. You had, you had a two hour car ride to talk about it. What do you mean? So you got there and you were just like, I don't know what we're doing. What were you doing on the entire car ride? How, how is it that you get there after a two hour car ride, and you're like, I have no idea what the plan is. Oh, it just, uh, it's driving me crazy. I didn't think that I would get this upset about it. It's driving me nuts. My girlfriend didn't know either. You don't coordinate? Was it a surprise that you were there at your own graduation ceremony? There's so many things that make me so angry about this. So that's why she went to ask everyone. And when I said I didn't really want to go is because I asked my girlfriend to make a plan with everyone beforehand so this exact thing wouldn't happen, but she was intent on just showing up and playing it by ear. What, so she gets the entire blame? She gets the entire blame? I'm a plan person. I legitimately, I legitimately can't believe they typed that out. I am a plan person. Then why didn't you make a plan? Okay, even if your girlfriend is just like, nah, 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 we're gonna play it by ear. You don't just let them completely dictate the experience. You have control too. You say, you say you, you say you want to say goodbye to everyone and see them all last time and you get upset when you don't get the chance to. So how come you can make a plan too? How come you will make a plan? If you're such a plan person? So things like that stress me out. Also, we have been having problems lately. Yeah, no shit. She's been ditching me a lot, which is why I wasn't sure if I wanted to go. But I decided that the four hours in the car would be some one-on-one -on -one time that we really needed. She she also doesn't say anything about the four hours in the car. What were you guys talking about the entire time? I can understand why a lot of people are saying that it was her graduation and it wasn't about me, which I totally get. But I should mention it was a big ceremony for the graduates in December that I went all out for. I was the foot. What? I was the foot. What? 
I did her makeup and hair. I got her presents in an apartment for a little congratulations party. Oh, this is a different thing. Okay, wait, wait, wait. this is a different, she's talking, oh my God. I thought she was talking about the graduation ceremony. I was the photographer. I was like, from your car? She's talking about a different thing. Okay, because I was like, why would you even be talking about this? I did okay, so for a separate ceremony for the graduates, okay, not, not, not the ceremony that they showed up at the last minute after it had already concluded for, but a different one. She's apparently the photographer, did her hair and makeup, got her presents and, and apart. I got her presents and apartment. I, you got her an apartment. I did also get her a nice graduation present for this too, which I gave her when we got home and she loved. This is so, this is so upsetting to me on, on so many levels. I, I, I'm more angry Maybe I shouldn't say angry. I'm more upset with this person than with, than with other threads where someone's just like overtly being an asshole and like, like, I don't know, saying really rude things and stuff. It's just like, oh, communicate. Please communicate. I'm begging you to communicate. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like the Bernie Sanders meme. I, I'm asking you once again to communicate with your partner. Everyone sucks here because why would you just wait in the car for an hour? Seriously, you have some agency too. And this is this is it. This is what I've been saying. You it's not like you're you're not uh you're not bound to her. You don't have a collar and a leash, okay? You can do things too. You can leave the car, you can text, you can call, you can make independent plans. And you did none of that. However, she's an asshole for just forgetting about you. Yes. Yes. We can't I I don't want that to get lost. She's an asshole for just forgetting about her. Yes. The thing is though, I don't, I also don't believe that she was just forgotten. Yeah, she is an asshole, but I, I think there's more to it than just like, oh, I forgot. She clearly didn't just forget, right? It sounds like this rough patch may be the whole relationship. She doesn't think about you at all and you don't even consider putting in some effort. That's a pretty good summation here. Yep. Um, yeah, boy, that was a really frustrating thread. That was probably the most frustrating thread I've read on the subreddit where nobody was being like overtly like rude or, or mean. I mean, yeah, there was the, you know, I forgot her, but like I said, she's not a dog. She's not locked in the car. AITA for being a picky eater and calling my ex a terrible cook. Now, before we get started with this, I'm gonna go ahead and say I have very little sympathy for picky eaters. So depending on what happens, I, I we may disagree on this, okay? I, for, personally, it's like one of my pet peeves, picky eating. Like if you don't have an allergy or something, so uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and say we may disagree, okay? I understand that some people are a lot more sympathetic about this than I am. So just want to get ahead with that. I 30F am a picky eater. Okay. Well, this isn't a support group. Pre-story. Oh God, how long? Okay, it's not that long. When I was younger, it was impossible to make me eat a lot of food. And I was also diagnosed with some sensory issues while eating. And that is part of the pickiness. Okay. So you're not just a picky eater. You have sensory issues. Okay. See, that's different. Um, I would like to know what the sensory issues are, but you know, that's just my morbid curiosity, but all right, all right. Okay, so you have good reasons for being a picky eater than just being like, no, I don't like that. Mom, cut the crust off my bread, that kind of thing. Things got better as I grew older and I was able to cook for myself the dishes I like and that are nutritionally healthy. Mainly, I don't like foods that are drenched in fat and feel heavy. Okay, like what though? Uh, drenched in fat, like what? I was lucky to get a well-paying job early in my life, 20. So instead of cooking, I have decided to try the ready meal delivery service as a lot of these are healthy and offer a choice and I hit cooking. Hey, totally valid. I think some of these meal delivery services are actually like, some of them are getting really good. Uh, Kimmy and I do one actually. At 21, I got married to Pete, 23M. Pete insisted on cooking himself and make me try new foods and was very against me ordering the ready meals, even though for me it was easier and cheaper and the time I'd spend on cooking I could put into my career or hobbies. I totally, okay, you know what? I didn't expect to be on the picky eater side here. This is like against my core values, but I totally get where they're coming from with this. I don't like Pete, I don't like him. I didn't like anything he cooked as it tastes awful to me and I would end up having a bad stomach after. Oh, okay, so you it, it's not just like you didn't like it. 
it you like legitimately had like a physical reaction to it essentially my pickiness was one of the reasons we divorced three years later okay i can't believe i'm saying this but i'm on your side now to the current day last week my boss and i went to a business dinner with an owner and an assistant of the company that wanted to be our partners the assistant ended up being pete which i was surprised to hear as he said he will never join the field i'm working in just before the dinner pete was making snarky comments to his boss and mine about me being a picky eater and us divorcing because of it pete was making snarky comments to his boss and mine yeah pete sucks however to his surprise i ordered a few dishes i would have previously found disgusting and would eat them no problem pete went nuts and started asking a lot of inappropriate questions and nearly calling me names until i got enough of it and said the reason why i was so picky with him was due to him being a terrible cook and that every of his dish would make me sick his boss laughed his boss laughed W! W! It's like the Fortnite emote. Yeah, that's a W right there. His boss laughed. We carried on with the dinner. Oh, okay, that's... I. Wow. I didn't think that I would have a, have a clapping reaction. Lady Gaga living for the applause over here to that, but that was great. Pete, the reason I was so picky was because you're a terrible cook and every one of your dishes made me sick. Imagine, imagine the guy's boss laughing after you say that. <laughs> maybe his boss laughed out of nervousness, like, a, oh, hey, oh, uh, maybe not, maybe not because he found it funny. The next day, I have received a lot of texts from Pete calling me an asshole for what I said, as now his boss has declined to come in to the dinner he was hosting for work and it is affecting his career. Well, maybe you should have thought about that before you brought it up, Pete. You're the one who brought it up in the first place. Trying to put someone else down to lift yourself up in front of your boss. Trying to impress the big wigs. And it backfired. Sucks to suck, Pete. Pete was asking a bunch of inappropriate questions from your boss. That's embarrassing. Also, it's totally your choice what you want to eat. Okay. Eh, okay, this, this second. All I'll say is yes, it is your choice what you want to eat, right? But I wouldn't say totally your choice it depends on the situation and it depends on um how much you're inconveniencing other people with it and i wouldn't say totally to bring back my little uh i'm not really sympathetic to picky eaters thing from earlier this is that rearing its ugly head okay um but yeah you know general sentiment i agree okay AITA for telling my wife she should have saved herself the trouble of cooking me a birthday dinner considering her cooking skills. Yes. All right. We get to read a your we get to read a, a definitive objective YTA thread. This is so exciting. Okay, here we go. My 28M wife 24 has terrible cooking skills, so she rarely even attempts to cook. We have a housemaid who cooks except for Sundays. Oh my god. We have a housemaid who cooks for us. Ooh. Yeah, you're the asshole. So we rely on takeouts every Sunday. Oh my god. So they're not only a housemaid, they not only clean, but they also cook for you? My birthday was on last Sunday. I don't really celebrate it, so we planned that I'll have lunch with my friends and dinner with my wife. I asked her if we can go eat at some nice place, and she declined, saying she will arrange the dinner. I thought she was going to order something. <sighs> You're the asshole. By the time I reached home in the evening, whole house smelled weird. She said she has cooked me a dinner. I was stunned because that was least expected, but decided to go along with that and wait until she set the table up. I won't go into details, but one dish looked half burnt and another was more like tasteless water instead of what she was calling a soup. The dessert was barely edible. She knew she messed up, but expected me to try them all. You're the asshole. 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 You're like the llama in Napoleon Dynamite and I'm Napoleon Dynamite right now and I'm shoveling food at you. Eat the food. I thanked her and told her we can still order or go out and she should not bother cooking because she knows her poor cooking skills very well. Oh, oh, 
my god. She got upset. <laughs> what? I don't understand. Why did she get so upset? What's her problem? And told me at least I could have tried it before she cleans the table and told me I can order for myself. She had her own cooked meal and did not touch my order. I feel so bad. I feel so bad for her. Now I look back and think maybe I was a bit too harsh. Does this make me an asshole? Yes, there's nothing to discuss. Yes, it does make you the asshole. Your wife, who doesn't cook often, wanted to do something nice for you and cooked you dinner on your birthday as a special treat for you because she wanted to do something nice and special and not only do you insult it, which maybe it was really bad. I don't know. But the, it's the thought that counts here. And the fact that you were like, we can still order out. That's so insulting. Also, she had her own cooked meals. So it's not like she wasn't, it's not like it was just for you. At least appreciate the thought. She expected me to try them all. You, oh, she, you didn't even, you didn't even try it. Soft YTA? Let me be clear. It's about your phrasing and breakdown of communication. That's not quite it, but okay. Transportation IC896. You saying she should not have bothered cooking because she knows of her poor cooking skills is so tactless. No, 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 that's not, that's not the tactless part. The tactless part is saying, is not trying the food and saying, let's order out instead after she cooks an entire full course meal for you. That's the tactless part. Even if it didn't turn out well, this way of delivering the comment just completely shuts down her efforts. Yeah, but that's, this is something that he said to us while retelling the story. How about the part where he says it to her? I understand it was your birthday as there are, as you pointed out, op, other ways to better celebrate this, the occasion. It was also a little unrealistic of your wife to expect you to try all the dishes. It's not unrealistic. It's not unrealistic. It's not what? It's a little unrealistic. Pardon? However, there are other ways to navigate the situation without being crass or bringing up your wife's cooking skills. So basically this person's saying like, yeah, you're right, but you could have been nicer about it. No, no, not, not soft YTA, hard YTA, hard. At the same time though, why did Op's wife make her husband a gift that she knew would most likely be a failure? Oh, oh my God. Because she wanted to do something personal and nice. Why not try the recipes a few times before? Maybe they did. Maybe they fucking did. Did you ever think about that? I'm just, hold me back, chat. Hold me back. Hold me back. Why not giving him a gift he would actually enjoy? Why refusing to go out or take takeout when it was clear the food was inedible? The food wasn't inedible. Okay, you first world bitch. It wasn't inedible. It just wasn't gourmet food from the housemaid. Ooh, okay. It was edible. I also feel like while Op was an asshole in his response to the situation, the wife had bad judgment when it came to the gift. They both should have acted better. 100% everyone sucks here. Yeah, everyone sucks here, but not the everyone that you think. You know what? I'd like to take it back. I'd like to take it back. You know what? At least, at least the, the original poster says, I look back and think I may have being too harsh. They feel bad about it. But these people, they don't feel bad. There's no introspection at all from them. They're the assholes. If everyone stopped doing things because they aren't great at it, nobody would do anything. Sometimes the thought does actually count. Thank you so much, uh, affectionate shoe. <laughs> I hate Reddit usernames. How do we know she hadn't been practicing or studying recipes? Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes. The champion we need. The champ. We found our champion, chat. We found our gladiator. Go. Go. Get him, affectionate shoe. Get him. How do we know she hadn't put a ton of time and effort into really trying to do something nice? People's intentions really need to be weighed more in the sub. She wasn't trying to ruin his birthday or make a shitty meal. She was trying to do something nice for her husband. It failed and he made her feel like shit. Yes. Yes. Get him, get him. If I gave my partner a shitty painting for their birthday after never paying for years, are they supposed to be grateful for it because I tried my best? If my partner paints something for me, I am going to keep it and treasure it. What the fuck? Who are these people? They're men, aren't they? Who, who looks at things like this? This is some Andrew Tate nonsense. Imagine painting something for your partner and they're just like, what am I supposed to do with this? 
this isn't a good painting. I was like, oh, you tried your best? So I'm supposed to be grateful for this? There's no, there's no way. There's no way they have a partner. They're like, if I gave my partner, you don't have one, clearly. Hopefully not. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, I really hope not. The Ralph Express. Any other day I'd agree, but it's his birthday. He asked for one thing and got another much worse thing. What do you mean he asked for one thing? What did he ask for? You don't know what he asked for. It's perfectly normal and reasonable to be disappointed about it. Oh, I can't, I can't stand these like logic box. Like rationally, it makes perfect sense. To they, they just like take all human emotion out of it. it drives me crazy. He 100% should have been more tactful about how he expressed that disappointment. No, 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 no. There's where you're wrong. You don't express disappointment. These people, these people have never had to like be polite to someone they haven't had to be polite to in their lives like somebody other than their boss or somebody in authority over them they never had to like just be polite to someone just to be polite to them as another human being huh you know what you can do with that disappointment you can just do what the rest of us do with it and shove it down in there and get over it it's called being a mature adult you die oh, but i wanted pizza for my birthday oh i want chocolate chocolate cake for my birthday Oh, this isn't my favorite food. What are you, five? I also want to say, nobody is mad that he's disappointed. He has every right to be disappointed. But that doesn't excuse the way he spoke to his wife. You can be disappointed, still not an asshole. 14 more replies? Let's read, let's read the sprawling wisdom of Ralph Express. Yes, that's literally what I said. My, oh, oh. <laughs> that's literally why I said okay so Ralph isn't just like an impolite person they're also an idiot no it's not you're excusing his behavior due to his disappointment messing up one birthday is not the end of the world and you need to wrap your mind around that people's efforts are worth something thank you affectionate shoe it's reasonable to be disappointed but he should have been more tactful in how he expressed it nobody is mad that he's disappointed but that doesn't excuse the way he talked to his wife can you seriously not see that these two senses are in complete agreement Okay, can I ask something? How did he go from minus 49 to 20 here? Down vote, 19. You've been very clear. The person you're arguing with probably sucks at cooking too. Oh God, here we, here comes, here comes these, here comes the trolls. It's like, I'm uh, sorry, the adults are talking right now, shotgun mouse, idiot, down vote. Shotgun mouse, it's so random. A mouse with a shotgun? Who ever heard of such a thing? LOL. Would I be the asshole for spraying some kid with my garden hose daily after he walks all over our lawn? Here we go. Here's the fun. Here's the fun. Some innocent light. I spray the neighborhood kid with a with my garden hose thing. I, 37M, live with my wife, 37F, and son and daughter, 911, respectively. Recently, there's been this kid who comes by our house after playing soccer and either rides his bike or walks over the lawn with his cleats on his way home. He's a regular Eddie Haskell. It started out as me giving him stern looks whenever I saw him. Then it slowly progressed to me asking him to just go around. Hey, just go around, kid. The last time I asked him to stop, he made a point to stomp extra hard and twist his feet into the grass to piss me off. NTA, I've decided. NTA. Since then, I've just been hosing him. The first time I sprayed him with the hose, he ran off. But then for some reason, he just started standing there while I hosed him like he enjoys it. <laughs> it's now progressed to me sitting on my lawn chair, pointing my hose at him, and him just staring at me while he does so. So let's even make small talk. I'm not gonna lie, it started off as a really bitter relationship, but I've actually gotten to know the kid quite well. We talk for maybe 50 to 20 minutes every day, and doesn't seem to mind being hosed down after sweating hard playing soccer. He comes by daily, and we just shoot the shit while I hose him, and he stands there for a bit. Wife told me I need to stop, even after I explained it to her. She says, I'm making us look like childish idiots. I guess I could stop, but honestly, it's really funny waiting for him to come by, and I see no harm in it. Would I be the asshole? Okay. Uh, yeah, these are the vibes I needed just now. Uh, keep doing it. It's funny. <laughs> like, first of all, even if he didn't enjoy it or he didn't like, you know, be like, oh, this actually feels kind of good after sweating playing soccer. Um, it wasn't like making like a little thing out of it. Even if he wasn't, uh, and he was just like, ah, stop. Oh, I hate that. I, I would have said NTA, but 
The fact the fact that he just kind of stands there and lets you do it, <laughs> and then and he's like, "Hey, how's it going? Hey, what's your favorite type of cookie? Mine's chocolate chip. Hey, have you just seen Bluey? I like that show. He's funny. The dad's funny. You know, you should try being funny like the dad on that show, like the dad on Bluey. You should try being fun like him." And then, and then it's just like walking home after like 20 minutes of that shit. That would be so funny. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, yeah, keep going. See, see how, see how far it goes. Like maybe you'll get to become like, you know, like some sort of Robin Williams uh, esque father figure to this kid. <laughs> Give him some advice. I mean, the kid sounds kind of like an asshole, but I guess no asshole here. Kid is obviously deprived of attention and is weirdly getting something bizarrely meaningful from this incredibly strange relationship. Has he stopped trying to damage your lawn? He still steps on the lawn, but not as recklessly as he did when we first met. He also parks his bike when he rides it on the sidewalk, but I'm not sure if he's doing that to be nice or because he doesn't want his bike getting wet. That is, he's, he's got his scheduled hose time.